you are most welcome to this lunch hour edition this is the ninth day of november the mass that almost ends i mean the second last mass of the of the year you are most welcome today for this lunch hour edition but before i go further i want to thank my spiritual mother prophetess manuela vaco who has given me this opportunity to come and share with you the saints who are watching me online today uh, I honor the anointing upon our life, upon our head, because she has really struggled for this altar that we are enjoying now. But before I start, I want to say a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you so much for this day that you have made, as David said. We bless your name, we honor your name. Holy Spirit, come and minister. Come and be a mouthpiece. I mean, let me be a mouthpiece. Come and speak to the saints online. I have prayed all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Online church, I will come you so much. We love you so much. As I've always said, it is another way of how you can also preach the word. You can also preach the word in sharing the, the message that I am going to give. For those people who have not been watching, Please share. Share for those people who have not been watching us or those who have not been watching me preaching this word. Today, not wasting time, on this ninth day of November, our topic is thou shalt not worship idols. You shall not worship idols. You shall never worship idols. My sister who's watching me, that is my topic of today. I have come with that topic on this ninth day of November. God is telling you that you shall not worship idols. You shall never worship idols. God, our God is a jealous God. Our God is a spirit. And it is the reason to why he does not want to appear. You know, if our God had appeared anywhere, people would be drawing him and begin worshiping him. It is the reason to why our God appears in spirit. Our God is a spirit. So, he laughs at you. Who molds monuments? Who makes idols? Who make pictures? Who make clays? And you begin worshiping that he is the God. Our God is not a monument. Our God is a spirit. It is the reason why he does not appear. Even when he came to speak to Moses in the book of Exodus, eh? he appeared in a fire form. There is no way how you can draw fire. I am telling you. He appeared in a fire form. He wanted to show Moses that he should not go ahead by drawing him to be an idol. You understand? That is the God I am talking about. So he is saying, do not worship idols because I am a jealous God. You shall not worship any other thing apart from me. Whoever worships any other thing, he is practicing high level of adultery in the Bible. So, we shall relate this with the preaching in the Bible. God is saying, he does not want you to worship idols. He wants you only to worship him because he's a spiritual being. Our God is a spiritual being. And that is why in the book of Genesis, he said, let's make man in our own image. When he was talking about man in our own image, he did not mean like a man like like a woman like no he meant the spiritual part of him god is a spirit and that's why when he came the day jesus was being baptized he said that is my son the power of the holy spirit came that is the spirit i am talking about now let me come back to you god is telling you that do not worship idols you know most of us have judged the Israelites. Most of us have preached against the Israelites. We have given them as an example, as rebellious people. We have preached, even us, even me, even the preachers of God, I mean the men of God, women of God, have preached when relating to rebellious people in the Bible as the children of Israel. When they were being relieved, when they were brought out of captivity, out of bondage, from slavery of Israel, I mean of Egypt, when they were brought out of Egypt, many people have always used this as an example. The children of Israel being rebellious, rebelling against God. We use it as an example. But I want to come to you 
Nobody should blame so much the children of Israel of whatever they did. Even you, you have behaved like the children of Israel. I am telling you, most of us have been so rebellious. In the movement of salvation, we have been so rebellious. You understand? God says, whatever takes much of your time, whatever takes much of your love out of him, whatever makes you complain of him, it becomes an idol. So many of us who have complained against our God, many of us who have loved any other thing apart from God, you know, when you love something else more than God, that thing becomes an idol. So many of us have given an example of the children of Israel. Yeah, the children of Israel, they misbehaved on their way as they were heading to the, to the promised land, to Canaan. They misbehaved. They did many wrong things. They worshipped idols. You understand? But you see, we have used them as an example upon our life. We have used them when we are preaching the word to people. We have used them. We have used these people as an example. They were rebellious. They did many wrong things. They didn't know what God did for them. How could they really forget what God did to them? Even when God eh, separated the Red Sea. You understand? But they could not know the type of God they are worshipping. They were so rebellious. We have given all this kind of example. When we are preaching the word of God to the saints, when we are giving examples to the saints, eh, trying to emphasize eh, how important, how our God is good. But let me tell you, I have seen men of God who have worshipped, eh, who have created too much love for earthly things than the God himself. And this is what God is saying. That whoever shall love something else than me, that becomes an idol. Anything that you love more than God, it becomes an idol. Many of us have loved earthly things. Many of us have loved cars. Many of us, we have loved our jobs more than any, more than our God. So anything that you love more than your Christ, more than the cross, it becomes an idol. Many of us have worshipped idols. Even you who is watching me now there. What is it that you love most? What is it that you love most? more than God. So that thing that you love most more than God, it becomes an idol. And this is what God is telling you, that whatever you love most, more than me, it becomes an idol. So do not worship any other thing. Do not worship any other thing apart from me. So that thing that you love most more than him, it becomes an idol. That's why I am telling you that you who has been abusing the children of Israel, you have been using them as an example of people who are so rebellious to their God. You are not better than them. So you can no longer give them as an example. Even, eh, you, cannot, you cannot give them as an example because even you, you are rebellious. Even you, you have loved something so much you have loved something so much more than your God. So you are equated to the children of Israel. So you can no longer use them as an example to people. You understand? You are part of them. So you better begin using yourself as an example. Because you have been so rebellious. You have loved something else more than your God. So your God today is coming and saying, Thou shalt not worship idols. God wants you only to worship him. I am telling you. God wants us to worship only Him. These things of the world have taken much of our time. Let me tell you, my sister, my brother, who is watching me, the saints who are online watching me tonight, at this last hour, what is the most greatest idol in our life is the spirit of religion. When the spirit of religion enters you, it becomes a serious idol. Let me tell you, our God is a spirit. Our God is not a protestant. I am sorry to say this. Our God is not a Catholic. Our God is not a Muslim. Our God is not... Our God is a spirit. The spirit of religion has diverted us. By the way, let me tell you, the word religion means divisionism. Religion means dividing us. God wants us to be one people. God wants us to be one. That is the spirit he wants us to worship. I am telling you. So, let me tell you, my sister, my brother, Sit down, calm down, and break the spirit of religion upon your life. If you are still believing in the spirit of religion, that you are still a Catholic, you are a Protestant, you are a Muslim, I don't refuse that. But one thing I know, Jesus said, some people you find them saying, by the way, my sister, my brother, you people, you hear some preachers say, you people be very careful. 
You will find the Muslims in heaven. It can never happen. You will find Protestants in heaven because of whatever the good things they do. Never. God, Jesus said, whoever shall not declare me shall not see my father. Do not deceive yourself. You can give to the whole street. You can do anything. But the thing is, it remains when Jesus said, whoever shall not get born again, whoever shall not confess me, shall not see my father. So do not lie to yourself. There are some people when you find them giving, consoling messages to religious people, eh? you find them saying, you know my sister, my brother, some of these Muslims whom we despise, some of these religious people we despise, one time we shall see them in heaven. Then that means the statement that Jesus made eh, becomes a lie. But Jesus says, I am not a liar. He made a statement and said, whoever shall not confess that Jesus is my personal savior, shall not see my father. Because he said, I am the way, the truth to my father. No one can see my father, unless through me. So, do not deceive yourself. Giving, go having a good heart. Yes, all those are the components eh, of what makes us go to heaven. So there are some people who say, ah, if I give, I will go to heaven. It will never happen. It will never happen. It will only happen to see your father in heaven when you come and confess and say today, Jesus, I have accepted you as my personal savior. He says so, that if you confess, if you get born again, as the God has asked, if you get born again, eh, that is when you will see the kingdom of my father. Nobody comes to my father unless through me. So there is no any other way. There is no any other way. There is only one way to heaven, Jesus Christ. He put it very clearly. So nobody should console religious people. Nobody should console another person that when you give to the world, when you give people, when you give, when you, you love, when you, you do whatever God wants you to do, eh, you will go to the kingdom of heaven. It will never happen. That was, a, by the way, I am telling you, the only way to see the kingdom of heaven is to accept him as your personal savior. Accept him. Get born again. Because it was very clear. God said he is not a liar. The statement he made was very clear when he was going. He who wants to see the Father in heaven should get saved, should confess. Let me come back. He says, do not worship anything apart from me. God only. He is a spirit. Anything that takes much of your time, anything that you complain so much and divert you from God, it becomes an idol. My sister, anything, anything that has diverted your mind so much, it becomes an idol. The reason why I was giving an example to the children of Israel, many of us, as I've been saying, that we have compared, when we are preaching the word of God, we have compared the children of Israel as being the most rebellious, as being... Huh? They, they, they promised people of God and they forgot what God has done for them. Because we always compare that they would have really seen what God did for them when they were crossing. When God divided the water, they would have not rebelled. They would have not worshipped idols. But let me tell you, God has saved you. God has relieved many of you. God has blessed many of you. And you prayed and you prayed and you prayed and God blessed you. And when he blessed you, you have also diverted away from him. You have left his altar. You no longer come to church. That becomes an idol. You are not very far from the children of Israel. What they did. God has healed you from a terrible disease. Eh? But you cannot remember that. You are still complaining. Because your focus, you have turned God a problem solver. You only come to church when there is a problem. You only come to pray when there is something you need from him. Let me tell you, our God is not a, a problem solver. Our God is a great God. He's a God for everything. That's why he says that whatever you put much of your time in it, eh, it becomes an idol upon your life. So you who has always been preaching the word of God and giving the children of Israel when they were, they, when they were moving from Egypt going to the promised land, you are using them as an example eh? that they were so rebellious. They worshipped idols. They did not know the God they worshipped. And you said, why could these people not realize the God that fed them with manna? The God that gave them food even in the desert. The God that gave them death, but they still worship idols. You are also one of them. You who is watching me. God has blessed you, but you have died blessed you with a job. 
He blessed you with a job after asking him. He blessed you with a job, but you have taught that job to be an idol. This is what God is saying. He has blessed you. So I am comparing this to the children of Israel. They crossed, God divided the Red Sea. They passed through the Red Sea. They saw how water swallowed, how water took over eh? the soldiers of the Pharaoh and Pharaoh himself. As the, the Bible says that even Pharaoh himself was in it. Because it is said that it was, it was discovered that it is seen that under the water, under the Red Sea, eh? the golden yoke that ties uh, I think the horse of the uh, oh, 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 of Pharaoh. It is under the water up now. An example. It is shown. History has shown. So they saw what God did, but still they could not believe it. They still continued. They still continued rebelling. They still continued disturbing Moses until they made Moses yeah, to get into problems. You understand? I am telling you, you are also one of them. You are also one of them. You cannot now use yourself also as, you cannot use the children of Israel as an example, as people who are rebellious. I am also rebellious. You are also rebellious. This word is not for you only. It is also for me who is preaching this word. Why should you only come to church when there is a problem? Why should you only come to church when there is fire in the house? God expects us to be in his house. God expects us to worship him all the time. That's why I am saying, he is telling you, stop worshiping idols. And I was saying, giving an example, that people think making a monument, that is what is meant, that is what is meant to be an idol. Drawing a picture and worshiping it, that is, meant, that is what means to be an idol. Eh? That is not the only example of an idol. I was giving an example that something that you love so much, exceeding your savior, it becomes an idol in your life. It becomes an idol. Now, when I get into the book of Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20, verses 2 to 3, for the interest of time, I will just read the first one. Hear what the Bible says, that I am the Lord God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. God has brought you out of that bondage. God has healed you. God has answered you mightily. God has done everything that you asked him. But one thing that how, this is how you have decided to pay him, by leaving his house. This is how you have decided to pay him. By not coming to worship him when he has blessed you. That is how you have blessed him. And this is exactly what happened to the children of Israel. He made them cross the Red Sea. And after they crossed, they could not even understand what God has done to them. They would think that is what they call the extraordinary power. The extraordinary power in your life. God has blessed you. God has released you from every kind of bondage. That's why I say some of us do not even you need to use the children of Israel as an example. Because we are an example ourselves. We are too rebellious. When God blesses us, we do not know even where we have come from. This is what God is saying. He who loves me must worship me in his spirit. He who loves me must worship me. That's why I was saying, he who still believes in religion, he is a serious believer of adultery. A serious one. Hear what the Bible says in the book of Leviticus, 26 verses 1. The book of Leviticus, 26 verses 1. He says, you shall not make idols of yourself or even erect an image or a pillar and you shall not set up a figured stone in your land to bow down to it. For I am the Lord your God. You understand? God is saying you shall not even raise anything. You shall not even put anything. Because our God is a spirit. Our God is a spirit. I was giving you an example when I was starting. And this is the reason why our God does not want to appear to any of us. He does not want to appear to any of us. Because if he appears, we shall begin drawing him in a figure of a woman, in a figure of a man. Our God is a spirit. He is a real spirit being. That's why he does not want to appear to us. He appears in spirit. 
That's why it says that you shall not erect any stone. You shall not make any monument. But I am also saying that it's not just a monument. It is that which is in you. Something that is in you becomes an idol when you don't know. You understand? When you love something beyond, when you, when you complain beyond, that thing that you are complaining against becomes an idol upon your life. What is that that you think God cannot do? Our God is a God of... He does everything. Impossibilities are only with man. Our God is a God who is possible for anything. I am telling you. So you do not need really to worship idols. You don't need to complain so much. You don't need to complain so bad. When you complain so bad against God, that because he has not done it, and many people have left church because they have waited for God for a very long time. They have waited upon him for a very long time. That is not just enough for making you leave church. Let me tell you, my sister, my brother who's watching me, the life that you have right now, just that you are living, let me tell you, you need to ask God to forgive you from today. That's why I said, you don't need to worship idols anymore. Love him. Make sure that you have the greatest love for only your God. Now, let me ask you, my sister. You have been in church. You have been praying for something, and God has not yet answered you. What of he who is born lame? What will he tell God? What of he who was born blind? What will he tell God? What of he who was born eh, dumb? What will he tell God? Will he abuse God? You, God has given you sight. He has given you all the five senses. Yeah? He has given you hands. He has given you everything. But you still complain against God. Let me tell you, my sister, from today, stop complaining. Stop complaining. God is going to answer you. As I've always said, that our God is a king. A king can decide to keep quiet. A king can decide to answer. Yeah? So wait for our God. Our God. Because it says that good things take time. Indeed, good things take time. You do not need to worship idols. You do not need to go astray because God has not answered. How can you begin answering? How can you begin asking something which does not talk? As we shall be reading the Bible, where the Bible says, those who worship idols, they are like those idols themselves, which do not talk, which do not have sense. How can you begin speaking to something which does not speak? How do you begin worshiping a wood? How do you begin worshiping a stone, an unliving thing, and you think it will answer you? My sister, my brother, who is watching me, come back to God. God wants you to worship him. Hear what he says in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, from verse 4 to 5. That you shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeliness of anything that is in heaven above. All that which is in the earth beneath. All that is in the water under the knees. He is saying, you shall not make anything an equivalent of him. God does not want us to make an equivalent of him. You cannot equate God to anything. Our God is a great God. So my sister, my brother who is watching me from today, make sure that you create a great love for your God. God wants us to love him more than any other thing. Any other things come after any other thing comes after. That's why I am saying that many of us have used children of Israel as an example for what evil they did, for how they, co how they complained. Even when God blessed them, they continued complaining until they reached Canaan. You understand? And up to now, they still complain. And is God gave them everything. He fed them. He gave them everything. And this is the same example. God has fed you. God has given you everything. But because we do not get satisfied, it is lack of satisfaction that is making us to go astray. Satisfaction. Lay sister, my brother. Be satisfied with what God has given you for now. It is lack of satisfaction when you fail to get satisfied in your life. It is what brings evil. When you fail to get contented with what you have, what God has given you, it is what brings evil. Many people have misbehaved in this world because they are not satisfied. They are not satisfied with what they want. Huh? They think they are not on top of the game. Many people have complained because 
when they always want to be on top, they always want to be in charge. When they are not in charge, they begin complaining that it is not well. My sister, my brother, stop living a life of comparison. Because if you live a life of comparison, you will not know what God has done in your life. Stop living a life of comparison because it is going to make you to begin worshipping idols. You shall begin worshipping something else that is not God. So today, the message is very clear. Do not worship idols. Do not begin saying the children of Israel were so rebellious. But even you, you are rebellious. You are worshipping idols, but you don't know. Anything that you love most, more than your God, it becomes an idol. Some of us, most of us have loved money. We have loved money more than anything. People say, I love money more than anything. You are already worshipping idols. Even men of God, I can do anything for money. That statement, it is already ointing God. That means money is more than your created heaven. You understand? Even men of God say, they make statements. I can do anything for money. It is the reason why people do not, people these days are not conscious. They can take money from any source that they don't even understand. So long as it is money. That one is what I'm telling you. You are already worshipping idols. Money without values, money without God is an idol. Anything without God in it, it is an idol. Let me tell you. A house without God in it, it becomes an idol. Because you will begin worshipping the house. You will begin worshipping the woman. You will begin worshipping whatever you are doing. You will take it in the forefront. This is what I am telling you. That our God is saying, do not practice idolatry. Do not practice idolatry. People are practicing idolatry in the church. Whereby they love any other thing more than their own God. They love money more than their own God. They love traveling more than their own God. All their mind is always in traveling than preaching the word of God. They just want, I have not reached this country. They just want to reach that country. Then after reaching all those countries, what else? What else? After traveling the whole world, what else? I have not seen men or women who have traveled the whole world eh? not dying. They all die. They travel the whole world. But let me tell you, where is the satisfaction? The satisfaction is in Jesus. All those things become idols. When you put something in the forefront, because the other people say, I must work hard and see that I travel the whole world. Then after that, what happens? What next? What happens after that when you have traveled the whole world? Mm -hmm. But still you'll come back. We have seen people. As Pastor Manjit was giving an example, that even people who are in America, when they die, they deport their body back to Uganda for burial. Now, you are crying. You think when you go to America, it is all done. All those are idols. Let me tell you, my sister, my brother who is watching me, love God, love your God, the Spirit God. Love your God more than anything. Today I am telling you, love your God more than anything. God is coming to you to tell you he loves you so much. So he expects you to love him. He expects you to worship him. He expects you to give him your time. He expects you to preach his word to the people who need that word. Because I have always told you that nothing that God wants from us. God wants us to keep his heritage. Keeping his heritage is preaching his word to the next generation. And the next generation to preach it to the next generation. That is what God wants to do. Is what I say, we pray because we do not know. God wants us to keep his heritage moving on. He wants his word to be a going concern. And his word cannot be a going concern when you are worshiping idols, when you are creating love for other earthly things. Do not conform to the earthly things. Do not conform to these things of the earth as it is written in the book of Romans. Do not conform to these things of the earth. God wants you to believe in him. God wants you to worship him. My sister, my brother who is watching me today, come back to God. Hear what the book of Colossians say. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5. Put to death, therefore. I repeat. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5. That put to death, therefore, what the earthly is in sexual immorality and impurity. Passions, evil, desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. All these things you are hearing. 
all this, the love of all these things becomes an idol. The love of too much sex, the love of adultery, impurity, passion, evil desires, conflictiousness, all this is what God is saying. They become idols. You understand? Desire of something, it becomes an idol. You find someone is working so hard, he even leaves God aside. He is working so hard because he wants to drive a Range Rover. Eh? Now, when a Range Rover comes, what else? What next? After driving it, you will still be wanting another class, a next one. So many people on this earth, even men of God, they are concentrating and working so much, worshiping idols. They only want to drive class. When you put too much desire in those kind of things, this is what is God is saying. When you put too much desire on something, that becomes an idol. When you put too much love on something, it becomes an idol. People, men of God, religious leaders, eh? they have put much of their heart, they have put much of their time on these earthly things. But I've always said, that even people who do not worship the almighty God that we worship, they have these earthly things in plenty more than even the religious leaders. What do you talk about that? What do you say about that? Our God is a spirit. He wants us to come back to him and worship him. He wants us to love him even when we don't have cars, even when we don't have what people think. Eh? That if you don't have in this world, you're not a human being. God wants to wo us to worship him the way he is. Because he's a mighty God. He's a God of plenty. He's a God of joy. He's a God of everything. As it is written in the book of Jeremiah 32, 27, he says there is nothing that is too hard for him to do. Why are you suffering? Why are you worshiping idols? When our God is saying that thing is too hard for him to do. Everything is so possible for our God to do, my brother, my sister who is watching me. Come back to God. Let's worship God. Stop worshiping idols. Stop believing in things which are not related to God, my sister. Hear what the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verses 4 says. That do not turn into idols or make for yourself any, any gods that cast all metals. I am the Lord God, your God. You don't need to make metals in a symbol of God. I am repeating it. My sister, my brother, who is still watching me, you are watching me online. If you are still having a spiritual, I mean, if you still have the religious spirit in you, that is the greatest idol upon your life. If you still have too much love for earthly things, that is the greatest idol in your life. Because God is saying that all these are his. He is the one who made them. There is nothing that is too hard for him to do for you. And you are complaining that God has not yet done it for you. And yet he has still given you life. There are people who had it in plenty, but they have left them. Even when they are at your age, why do you talk about it? Why do you talk about it? For you have life. The most important thing that you have is life. That's why God is saying, if I have given you life, you cannot worship God. You cannot preach the word of God when you are dead. Worship him, preach his word when you are still alive. You are alive and you are watching me. That is what God wants you to do. God wants you to preach his word. God wants you to spread his word. Because he said, when he was living, he said, move the whole world. Preach my word to everyone. Let everyone know about my word. This is the most important thing that we are supposed to do. We are supposed to preach the word of God. If you can still be ashamed, about the name of Jesus. He said, I shall also be ashamed of you in front of my father. You don't need to be ashamed about the word of God. You don't need to be ashamed. Our God is a spiritual being. We need to preach his word. Let me tell you, my sister, my brother who is watching me, there is nothing so good like worshiping the almighty father. There is nothing so sweet like preaching the word of God. I am telling you, it is the most greatest thing that you can do for your creator. It is the most important thing. That's why I've always told you that do not believe in man. Do not worship man. Those are idols. Do not worship a woman. Do not worship anything on this earth. Because they remain here. 
That's why I say you don't need to worship man. You don't need to put your trust in man. God wants you to trust him. Because when you worship man, he becomes an idol. A man shall die. And all his ideas and all his vision shall remain on the grave. Only worship him. The cross. The cross. Jesus took it on the cross. He said it is done. Only worship him, Jesus, who died and he resurrected. And when he resurrected, he went to heaven and he said he has gone to prepare you a place in heaven. Because he said his father's house has very many rooms. So you need to work hard to be in one of those rooms. That's why I'm telling you, my sister, today, our God wants us to come back to him. Whatever has been taking us astray is an idol. So for you, you think you are not worshipping eh? a monument. You are not worshipping a picture. You are not worshipping an idol. My sister, whatever you love most in your life, that is more than your God. That is a serious idol. If you love your car more than any other thing, more than your God, let me tell you, it becomes an idol. That car of yours has become an idol. That wife of yours has become an idol. That land of yours has become an idol. On Sunday when people are going to church, for you, you are going to see your land which you bought, I don't know where. Eh? It is only Sunday that you want to go and see the land that you bought. That land, God has given it to you. It becomes an idol. Why should you see it is on Sunday that is when you are supposed to go and see your to check on your land? You understand? That land becomes an idol. This is what I am telling you. It is on Sunday that you are taking your car to be washed. That car becomes an idol. It is on Sunday that's when you are going to pay a visit to people. That visit becomes an idol. Let me tell you, a love for something eh, becomes an idol. Why should you only do? God has only given you Sunday. Eh? There are some people sometimes who are always complaining about me. When I tell them that for me on Sunday, please do not count to me. You will never see me. Said you, man. How do you pray the whole day? I said, but let my brother. From Monday to Saturday, I have been doing my own things. Now, why can't I give God just a Sunday, one day? You find they're complaining. Said, for me on Sunday, you will not see me. Because Sunday, I give it to God. You understand? Because even when service has ended, I have to make sure that I be around this altar so that he can feel me. I can feel his presence. You find people complain, he said, but you man, what is this kind of life you are living? Huh? People think, let me tell you, you will never get satisfaction. Satisfaction is only in Jesus. You can work Monday to Monday, Friday to Friday, workaholic. You can do everything possible, but you will never be satisfied. There are some people you find that even on Sunday they are going to office. Other people are going to church, they are going to office. That they are going to work. They want to beat deadlines. Deadlines will never end, let me tell you. They will never end. Deadlines will never end, my brother. There are people who are in them even before you are born. And they died. They left deadlines. You understand? So for you who thinks you will finish deadlines, you will never finish deadlines. You will not feel that those late the deadlines I am telling you that you do on Sunday that you cannot go to church, they become a serious idol. They become a serious idol. Because anything that is beyond the love of God becomes an idol. That's why I'm telling you, my sister, my brother who's watching me, anything that takes your time beyond God, it becomes an idol. Come back to the cross. When you do something extraordinary after God, you are taking Jesus Christ back on the cross. You are taking him to be nailed on the cross. You understand? Anything that you do extraordinary beyond the love of God, it becomes an idol. You are taking back Jesus back on the cross. Here what the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 14 says, Therefore, beloved, flee from idolatry. Very brief. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 14. Therefore, my brethren, therefore, the beloved, flee from idolatry. This is what St. Paul was telling the Corinthians. That flee away from idolatry. Flee away from worshipping idols. Flee away from worshipping these other things beyond your God. Because God wants you. God expects you to worship him. My sister, my brother who is watching me, here, what the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3 says, you shall have no other gods before me. There is no any other God you shall have before him. 
Our God is a jealous God. He expects us only to worship him. Only him. Huh? Hear what the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 18 says. What profit is it an idol when it makes, when, it, <coughs> when the makers has shaped it? A metal image, a teacher of liars, for it is maker trust in his own creation when it makes speechlessness. Hear what the Bible says, Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 18. That of what profit is an idol when, it, when its makers has shaped it a metal image, a teacher of, of lies? For, it, for its makers trust in his own creation when its makers are speechless. Imagine, this is what I was telling you. You have made a metal. You have made a block. You have made a picture. But it is speechless. But for you are speaking to it. Now, you become like it. You become more stupid like that thing which is not speaking. You understand? Of what profit is it? This is what Habakkuk is saying. Of what profit is an idol when its maker has shaped it as a metal, an image? Yeah? And a teacher of lies. For its maker, trust in his own creation. Imagine, you the maker, you are trusting in your own creation. What you have made, a method that you made, and you are trusting in it. What can that method do for you? Here, the book of Psalms, chapter 114, I mean 115, verses 4 to 8. Because of interest of time, I'm just going to read two verses. In the book of Psalms, 115, verses 4 to 8, there are Idols are silver and gold. The works of human hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. They, are, they have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not feel. Feet, but they do not walk. And they do not make a sound in their own throat. Those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. Be like them. Let me trace you. He's saying all these idols that are made, they can't talk, neither can they walk, neither can they do anything. So you who has made them and you trust them, you are like them. So David was exactly equating it that you who trust in your car, you'll be like, you will be just like your car. You will fade off like your car. I am telling you, you who trust so much in that land, let me tell you, you will be like that land. That's what he was trying to say. Because it cannot talk, it cannot move, it cannot say anything, it cannot feel, eh? but you are trusting in it. It cannot speak, and you're speaking to it, and you're trusting it, and you're saying, and you're believing in it, that it will give you whatever you want. This is what David is trying to say. That because you have made it, you will become like it. You will become stupid like it, because it cannot speak. So this is what David is trying to say. Hear what he says in the book of, what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 42, verses 8, that I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory gives no other, no more praise to covet idols. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, no my praise to covet idols. His glory cannot be given to idols. Many of us have given our glory to idols. When God does for us great things, we give thanks to man. We give praises to our uncles. You have been praying for all these years. You have been praying. You have been believing God. You have been praying for a job. You have been praying for a beautiful woman. You have been praying for money. You have been praying to God. I don't know where because people believe in these earthly things. You have been praying for these earthly things and God answers you. But when God answers most of us, you begin hearing if it was not my uncle, if it was not my papers, if it was not my uncle who works in the United States, if it was not my mom, those people become idols. That's why in the book of Isaiah 42, verses 8 says that I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, no my praise to come with idols. So we have given credit that God has put into our life into idols. I am telling you, we have given credit to human beings. We have given credit to man. When God blesses us, 
when God blesses us beyond, we give credit to human beings. We forget about God. There are very few people who come and give testimonies and thank God. They begin saying, no, it was my papers, my brother. If it was not for my papers, I would have not made it there. And yet he spent many years with his papers without a job. You understand? Why couldn't his papers help him? Why couldn't his uncle see him? Huh? They begin praising. This is why God is saying that I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no any other. No praise to any covet idols. Here what the book of Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 to 26 says. I will only read. I will only read a chapter. I will, I will read only two verses or one in the interest of time. That and God spoke all these words, saying, I am the God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Now, God is saying, he's telling you who is watching. God is saying that he is the God who brought you out of slavery. He is the God who anointed you. He is the God that has given you the grace to preach his word. He is the God that has uplifted you where you are. He is the God that has given you whatever you have. He is the God that has created you. Who are you to begin worshiping any other thing apart from him? Who are you to begin believing in these things of the world? So he is telling you, come back. Come back to him. Here what the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 16 says, that beware lest you act as corruptly by making a carved images for yourselves in the form of any figure, the likeliness of men or of human. Here, that beware list of you act corruptly by making carved images of yourselves in the form of any other figure, the likeliness of male and human. You understand? You find people making idols looking like frogs, making idols looking like elephants, making idols looking like men, making idols looking, I don't know, they call, they call them uh, Bikira Maria, eh, Maria, I don't know, I don't know who saw, who saw her. Eh? People making those kind of idols. That's why I'm telling you, whoever does that, God is annoyed with that kind of person. If you are still there and you still believe in idols, you still believe in pictures, you still believe in monuments, you still worship our oh, monuments, my sister, my brother who's worshiping me, you still worship cars, you still worship a woman, you still worship land, you still worship that thing that you love so much. God is laughing at you. He is saying, come back to him. Because everything that you need is with him. Because there is nothing that is too hard for him to do for you. You understand? Most of us have put much of our heart. I will have to make sure that I drive this kind of car. And it becomes your passion. Because they say too much of passion becomes an idol. So that passion that you have put too much, it becomes an idol. So you, don't, you can't afford to begin also equating yourself according to the children of Israel. Eh? You can't begin blaming the children of Israel for whatever they did. You are a man of God. You have packed like 10 cars in the compound. Eh? When people come, you want them to see how important you are. You want, they want them to see the value of you. All those become idols. You are a man of God. Why should you pack 10 cars in your compound? Why should you pack, I don't know, why should you have plenty of it when others don't have? Even those who are in your church, they are lacking. Why should you have them? That is what I am saying. Those things become idols. Why should you have too much money in your account? Hey? And you begin worshiping. Because that is what God is saying. Why? When you still have needed people in church who have problems, who are jobless, why can't you create for them jobs with that money? Why should you have very many cars in your compound? Those cars become idols. This is what God is saying. My sister, my brother who is watching me today, this is what God is saying, that whatever you love most, whatever you put in your heart so much, it becomes an idol. Most of the religious leaders, they always put much of their heart going abroad. They all want all the time to be traveling. Yeah? And yet God has really blessed them to preach to the environment, to the community where they are in. Yeah? 
They want to go all the time. They just want to move outside with an intention of making money. All those things become an idol upon your life because it exceeds the love of Jesus Christ, exceeds the love of God. All those things become serious idols upon your life. So today, my sister, God wants you back. Hear what the book of Exodus chapter 34 verses 14 says. You shall worship no other gods, for the Lord whose name is jealous, as jealous as God. You shall not worship any other god. God is saying you shall not worship any other god, only him. Whoever, when you worship any other thing, when you worship man, you find people worshiping men. People worshiping things of this world. People worshiping eh, sportsmen. People wa- Let me tell you, all those things become idols in your life. We forget about our God. Hmm? Anything, God is saying you shall not worship any other thing. You shall not praise any other thing apart from me, your God. Because all these things that we are worshiping in this world, God expects them, us to have them. You understand? He created them. Hmm? Here what the book of Psalms, chapter 81, verses 9 says that. Let there be no strange God among you. Nor shall you worship any foreign God. God is very serious. Here, that there, let there be no strange God amongst you. In the book of Psalms, chapter 81, verses 9. Let there be no strange God amongst you. You are worshiping me. God is saying, let there be no strange God in your house. He is the only God. Nor shall you worship any other foreign God. He wants only him to be worshipped. That's why I'm saying anything that you love so much, it becomes a what? It becomes a foreign God. It becomes something else. Anything that you put in your heart so much, it becomes a foreign God. Yeah. I am telling you, my brother, my sister, who is worshipping, I mean, who is watching me, today God wants you to come back and worship him. He wants you only to believe in him. Hear what the book of John, chapter 4, verses 23 says. That by the hours is coming and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such a people to worship him. This is what God is saying, my sister, my brother who's worshiping me. I mean who, who is watching me. John chapter 4, verses 23. I want to repeat it. Hear what John is saying. That, but the hour is coming and it is now here. It is now here. I am standing. It is now here. When the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such a people to worship him. Do not. The only thing that you can put in front of you. It is the cross. And you do not need to put the picture of the cross. I mean the, 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 the portrait of Jesus on the cross. Because he left the cross. By you putting him on the cross that is still there? No. You are taking him back on the cross. He left the cross long time. It is a symbol that we use. Whoever is still worshiping a cross that has Jesus in it, you are lying to yourself. You are taking him on the cross. He left the cross. He was removed on the cross. He was put in the tomb for three nights and three days. He resurrected and he went to heaven, seated on the right hand of the Father and he said he will come back again to judge the living and the dead. Let me tell you, Jesus will come back one time, one day. He said, I have gone to heaven to prepare for you a place. There are very many rooms in my father's room, in my father's house. So work hard for those rooms. That's why he said, but the hour is coming and now it is here. When the true worshippers will worship the father in spirit and truth. For the father is seeking such a people who worship him. You come back. God wants you to worship him. God wants you to come back to him. He wants true worshipers. He wants people who will worship him in spirit. He does not want these people who will come and begin worshiping idols. People will begin worshiping pictures and they be calling his name. And yet they are watching pictures. You understand? They are facing pictures. They are facing eh, molded, molded, uh, I mean, uh, molded, molded monuments. And they are saying, it is God. That is not God. God is saying those people who believe in him, 
believe in him in spirit. Those people worship him. They worship him in spirit. And he wants those kind of people. And you are one of them. My sister who's watching me, I am telling you, as I'm almost coming to an end of this day, I am telling you, my sister, my brother, hear what the book of 1 Corinthians says, chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not know? Do, do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immorality, nor the adulterers, nor the men who practice homosexuality, nor the, <coughs> nor the liars, nor the greedy, nor the, the drunkards, nor the rivalers, nor the swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Because all these things that I have called, all these things that I have said, all these are idols, swindlers, greedy people will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. People who are too greedy, they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. We have greedy people in church. We have people who are too greedy. We have swindlers. We have wrong people. We have adulterers. We have people who still believe in sexual immorality and they are in church. They are in salvation. All these are idols. We have men of God who are not yet really delivered from this kind of us. I'm telling you, my sister, all those are idols. These are idols God is talking about. As I'm almost coming to an end, I want to read for you the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 14. That you shall not follow other gods, any other gods of the people who surround you. He was telling the children of Israel that you shall not follow other gods of any other gods of the people who surround you. You don't need to believe in other people, other people's God. You don't need to begin asking how are people, other people making it. Just believe in that God of yours. No, he is going to do it for you. He is going to make it for you in life. That God is talking about. That's why he said that. Do not believe in the gods of those and the gods of the people who surround you. Believe in only your God. Do not pay attention to other people's gods. Pay attention only to your God. Because your God is so important. Your God is so great. He is going to give you whatever you need. So my sister, as I'm almost coming to the end of this program, to the end of this preaching, I want you to come back to God. What is that that has taken much of your time? What is that that has taken much of your love from Him? What is that that is disturbing your heart? That is destabilizing you from God? All those are idols. So know it very well that whatever is destabilizing your life, whatever is making you unsettled in His word, those are idols. And God is saying, do not worship idols. That's why it says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, 14, that you shall not follow other gods, any of the gods of the people who surround you. Don't believe in other people's gods. Because they are prospering, you begin asking, how are they making it? You understand? Do not believe in their God. Believe only in that God of yours. He is going to bless you mightily. There is nothing that is too hard for him. As I told you, always read the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, 27. You will always get carried. There is nothing that is too hard for God. When you read the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 9, there is nothing that is too hard for God. Our God tells us to not be discouraged. Be encouraged. Believe in me. I shall always be ahead of you. I shall be behind you. There is nothing that is too hard for me to do for you. Eh? Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 8, verses 19. It shall come about if you ever forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you today that you shall you shall surely perish. Hear what God is telling you at the end of it all. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 19. That it shall come to it shall be it shall come about if you ever forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify, God is testifying against you today. If you're worshiping idols, hear what God is saying. I testify against you today that you shall surely perish. You are going to perish if you worship idols. Read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 19. For surely if you worship idols, you shall perish. There is nowhere you're going. So, as I come to the end of today's program, I want to thank you so much for listening to me. One thing that I want to tell you, my sister, our God is saying, is testifying, against you today if you are still worshiping idols that if you surely you worship idols you shall surely perish you shall surely perish do you need to perish why should you perish when he has given you another chance he is just saying confess 
and allow me into your life. Confess and say, I am your savior. Confess, for I shall give you another opportunity. It's only through me that you can see my father. I want to come to the end of this program as I say a word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you for the word of this truth. Today, we have learned, we have seen your word. Indeed, Father, we shall not worship idols again. We shall not perish. We shall follow you. Father, we thank you so much for this word of today. That Father, whoever has seen, whoever has watched me, I know this word shall change their life. I have prayed all this in the mighty name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And whoever is online, say amen. Thank you so much for listening to me online chat. I'm off.